This is the Valley Today. One person is being treated for a gunshot wound and a Fargo man is in the Cass County Jail on a charge of attempted murder. Police say they got the 911 call yesterday morning around 7 from 22 year old Kyle Lavasse who told them that he had shot someone. It happened at the Countryside Trailer Court just off 25th Street. A 24 year old was taken to the hospital with serious injuries. There's no word on their condition or what led up to that shooting. A 4th of July celebration turned tragic in western North Dakota. Mandan police say a six year old girl is dead after an accident during preparations for a parade yesterday. Yesterday, excuse me. That child was riding on a trailer on the way to a staging area for that parade when she fell off and was then run over. She later died at the hospital. Another holiday accident claimed the life of a Minnesota teenager. Police in the Twin Cities suburb of Brooklyn Park say an 18 year old man was holding a firework when it exploded in his face. A friend performed CPR on him, but that victim later died at the hospital. Police say they have now arrested the suspect in a deadly July 4th parade shooting that killed six people and injured 38 others in a Chicago suburb. And there is video, this video right here on your screen this morning of that man being taken into custody. Robert Cremo III was spotted in a car in North Chicago yesterday after that shooting where officers then tried a traffic stop before he led them on a chase. At the end of it, police say that Cremo surrendered without incident. He was taken to the Highland Park Police Department for questioning. Two Philadelphia police officers who were shot during July 4th festivities have now been released from the hospital. One of the officers suffered a graze wound to the head while the other was shot in the shoulder. People ran from that area as gunfire rang out. Police are not sure if the shots were a ricochet from celebratory gunfire or if it was intentional. There's no word on anyone being arrested. 602 now on this Tuesday morning. Let's get a check of your forecast. Uh, a lot of folks waking up. Nice to see a bit of that sunshine, but still some clouds out there, Summer. Yeah, we've got some cloud cover, especially across the northern valley. A, a shallow layer of some cloud cover and some fog in parts of the southern valley, but more notable in parts of west central Minnesota. So I do have the yellow light turned on for your morning commute forecast because some areas that visibility is quite low, less than a half a mile and then this afternoon green light good to go with some summertime passing rain showers. Here's a look at our visibility right now. Fargo, I've been watching our visibility for the last hour or so. It has now dropped to six miles in North Fargo. That reading is from the airport. Visibility down to two and a half miles in Oaks at this hour. And Detroit Lakes has been the trouble spot so far this morning has been or near zero visibility for an hour at least around a quarter mile visibility in Bemidji and Wadena right around a half mile in Fergus Falls. So folks who were in Lakes Country over the weekend, maybe you're traveling back today. You want to we add a little extra time either for your morning commute or heading back uh, home after the weekend. Currently in Fargo, we're at 64 degrees with a bit of that fog. Wind is out of the north at seven miles per hour and it's foggy. It's mild. It's humid. That humidity at 96% uh, at the airport at this hour. Grand Forks currently 66 degrees, some a uh, little touch of a breeze out of the north northeast at 12 miles per hour. Humidity at 93%. Temperatures across the region, we're waking up very mild. We have widespread 60s closer to 70 along the North Dakota, South Dakota border, but our dew point temperatures are also in the 60s. And when those two numbers are close together, things are looking humid. Satellite and radar right now, Jordan, things are quiet, but I expect a few changes as we head into this afternoon with some showery activity and I'll time out in your hour by hour forecast when we might expect some thunderstorms to develop uh, when and where I'll have that in here uh, here in just a few minutes. You might want to bring your rain jacket just in case on the way home from work. Right. Yeah. All right, Summer, thank you. It is now 604. We have new information this morning on a deadly car crash we first told you about on the valley today yesterday. The Minnesota State Patrol is now identifying that victim as 18 year old Peyton Larson of Herman, Minnesota. The police report says alcohol was a factor in that rollover in Stevens County on Sunday afternoon. Larson's car left Highway 9 and then rolled. He was not wearing his seatbelt. 
A Minnesota man is in jail accused in a drive by shooting last summer in Cass Lake. Diego Gasca was killed one year ago today while standing in a yard during a house party. Authorities arrested a 46 year old Cass Lake man last Friday in connection with that killing, but he has not yet been charged and the sheriff's office is not publicly identifying him yet. However, a search of the Cass County, Minnesota jail roster shows that 66 year old William Hedburn of Cass Lake was booked on that same day on a charge of second degree murder for drive by shooting. If you had a rough travel experience over the 4th of July weekend, you are not alone. There were thousands of flight cancellations, delays and luggage issues, which showcase just how fragile the air travel chain is after COVID. The airlines in many cases did early retirements. You know, they got rid of those really expensive senior employees and they didn't think demand was going to come back this quickly. Even with airlines struggling with the staffing issues, travel experts say you are entitled to a refund if your flight does get canceled. It's a U.S. Department of Transportation rule. So far this year, FlightAware says that 2.8% of all U.S. flights have been canceled. More than 20% have been delayed. Get ready for some longer lines at the Fargo Airport. Starting today, the TSA will begin installing new scanners to make flying out of Hector Airport safer. The Valley Today's J.C. Dodd joins us live with what you need to know before you uh, try to get out of town. Good morning, JC. That's right. You're definitely going to want to plan a little bit more time for yourself if you're planning a flying out of Hector here in North Fargo. That's because today the installa installation of three new 3D um, security cameras, um, surveillance cameras for the security system are going to be installed starting today. So the Jordan, that's gonna go through for the next two weeks. That's going to make the lines a little bit or a lot longer, depending on the time of day and where that they are at in the install, installation process. So you're gonna to wanna to prepare. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you're um, giving yourself enough time to not just get through security, but also prepare for an extra long line. So um, officials are saying you wanna make sure you're packing smart, you're following the rules of TSA, just to avoid having to get pulled out of line and then search your bag separately. Now, a good thing with this new security system is it's going to be a lot safer for both passengers and crews that work here at Hector International Airport, um, as well as making things more quick once this process is over. So we've just got to get through the growing pains of installing the new um, state-of-the-art uh, security, but for now, you're going to want to make sure you are giving yourself enough time to get to the airport and get through security um, be, had there be any delays. Good advice to keep on time. JC Dodd reporting live this morning. Thank you. And from air traffic delays to some road delays, we have a traffic alert for people driving in South Fargo starting today. 25th Street South will be down to one lane in each direction between 32nd Avenue and Rose Creek Parkway. Crews are replacing the curbs and gutters and resurfacing that pavement. The project should take about two weeks. Also today, 7th Avenue West in West Fargo between 6th and 7th Streets will be down to one westbound lane. Contractors are wrapping up utility work in the area. Traffic will be diverted to Main Avenue. Still to come on the Valley today, a star player for the WNBA sends a letter to the president asking for his help in getting home. But next, Summer Schnellbach is in letting us know who can expect to see a few showers as we head on into this hazy Tuesday.